In this video, we're going to talk about putting a YouTube video into an Adobe Captivate project. Recently, I did a short video on how to embed a web page using a web object from the objects drop down button. Uh, similarly, in this situation, we're going to use a learning interaction that's designed specifically for embedding YouTube videos. And you can find that in the Interactions drop down button. So I'm going to click the Interactions drop down button and choose Learning Interactions. This will bring up my Learning Interactions selection window, and you can see all the various learning interactions that are available. I generally don't use learning interactions. I've not found um, too many that that I can't create in, an, in another way um, that maybe is uh, more effective for me. But certainly I encourage you to check this out and see if there's any functionality here that you'd like to take advantage of. The one that I do use from time to time is the YouTube learning interaction. And if you're using Adobe Captivate 8 like I am, you'll probably find that as the very last item of all the learning interactions that are available. So I'm going to select that now and I'm going to click on insert and that's going to put this particular learning interaction or widget, if you will, onto my page. It's going to open up the configure interaction window where I can actually input in the um, the the items the uh, the information that I need to play to play this particular YouTube video. The first thing I need is the actual URL, the video URL from YouTube. So let's open up uh, my browser, and we'll just go to um, YouTube in this case here, and we're going to find. I have a video in mind actually that. Uh, that I think will be appropriate for this. We'll go to my channel here and then we'll select videos. Scroll down. This is actually one of the older videos that I have. And I'm just going to pause this because I don't actually need to play the video. I just need the URL from the top here. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to close the browser returning myself to Adobe Captivate and I'm going to paste this into this field right here. Now uh, it's important that you use the full youtube.com slash you know watch question mark V equals and then of course the code for the actual video. Uh, sometimes you might see a short code. Uh, those short codes won't work. You need to use the full URL for that video. You can test it by pressing this test button right here and that will open up your video in full screen uh, in a new browser window. There are a bunch of playback options that you can choose. Uh, specifically, you can choose whether the video auto plays or not. Uh, I'm going to choose autoplay in this case because I want it to start right away. But perhaps if you had, let's say, some information for your learners to read first or some instructions about playing the video, you may not want the video to automatically start. The other thing you may want to select is the quality. Uh, I'm going to stick with default here right now, but let's say, for example, you had some restrictions on your company uh, intranet. Uh, your company network was, let's say, not as fast as some others were. Maybe you might want to choose a lower bandwidth uh, video size. The other things you can choose, of course, is whether the video loops at the end or not, or whether it shows a related video. Uh, these two are um, are dependent on one another so if I choose loop I can't show a related video at the end but if I do show related video obviously I can't have the video loop and start over once again. In this case I'm going to leave both options unchecked. Uh, if I'm publishing for a flash output I can select if this video is a 16 by 9 format or not. 
Um, and I also, under player options, again, if I'm publishing for flash output, I can have it remove the play bar. Uh, you could remove the play bar, for example, if you don't want users to control the, the, the playback and fast forward or skip things. Um, but generally, I don't like to restrict my users anyway. Uh, you can also have this widget show the video publisher's information. Um, I can't imagine why this would be important, but maybe for attribution purposes, you may want to uh, credit the original YouTube video uh, publisher for the for their their usage. Um, there's some theme related stuff here, so you can make some selections that are appropriate for your template. If you're using, let's say, a lighter template as I am, there's a lot of white in my template, then I might want to choose a light theme or use the color white. The last option, of course, is the, uh, the particular time in the video. And you can set your video to start after a particular number of minutes or a particular number of seconds. So once you've set up all of your parameters the way you want them, click OK and that will create your widget on the screen. You'll know that the widget's been set up because you'll see this sort of preview here where it's not showing you a preview of the video but rather giving you some instructions about viewing it. So in this case here it says that to preview this video I can only use the F11 which is the uh, in-browser HTML preview, or F12, and that's the Flash in-browser preview. Or obviously I could publish the course to my web server and view it from there. Um, one thing to make sure of is that when you put a YouTube video up on your screen, that it should be available for the rest of the slide. Uh, if it's only there for three seconds, which is often the default with Adobe Captivate, uh, the video is going to disappear after a couple of seconds. And in this case here, I think I'm pretty much good to go. So let's test this out. I'm going to use the preview function. Again, I'm just going to use the regular F12 in browser option. Um, but I'm just going to click on it here and we'll see what this looks like. So there you go, that's what a, um, a YouTube vid a video embedded into my course looks like. Um, pretty straightforward, and obviously at this point my learners could click next and proceed with the rest of the course. There's a couple of things that I'd like to mention about embedding a YouTube video. Uh, two things in particular. Number one is um, make sure that you have the rights, and when I say the rights, I mean copyright rights, uh, to use a particular video. There's an assumption among many instructional designers uh, that just because it's on the internet and freely available to everyone means that you have the rights to use it in your training. This is actually not true. Uh, most places, most countries in the world that recognize uh, copyright um, will we'll tell you that uh, you cannot use, even if you're linking to someone's video, uh, they may not approve of the method that you're using. So of course you need permission to do that. And sometimes there's a cost associated with that, sometimes there's not. 
A better solution is to uh, use your own content. So if, uh, if I was creating a, a course and then I wanted to emphasize teamwork and showing an example of that, I might use this ANTS video that I personally shot um, and edited together. This is my own work and uh, you know the other advantage of using your own work and publishing it to your own YouTube channel is that I can kind of guarantee the integrity of that video as well. So when you use a random video selected off of the internet, uh, selected from YouTube, uh, you don't know that it's going to be taken down tomorrow or the next day because of course the original author or the original poster of that video um, you know, first of all, they may be in violation of some kind of copyright law, and therefore they may get taken down by YouTube itself. So the last thing you want is six months or a year after you've published your course for the course to suddenly be missing that video because it's been removed from YouTube. Again, the best solution is to create your own content, create your own YouTube channel, and put the content up. Uh, under your full control and everything. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing, I encourage you to, to subscribe to, uh, to my channel. And, um, you know, if you like this particular video, uh, please give me a thumbs up.